Wow. <laughs> Dave, you get quite a workout there. <laughs> Keeps him out of trouble. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see all of you that uh, turned your clocks ahead. I'm wondering how many people were missing. <laughs> My cats were confused. <laughs> um, it's just nice to be here and thank all of you for attending and thanks to the Toms that are taking care of our sound and to Deanna and my liturgist, Miss Katie, and we welcome all of you that are watching us from home. It's our fourth Sunday in Lent. My goodness, I'm craving chocolate. <laughs> but I've been good. Um, we have a lot well, a number of announcements today. First, I'm, I want to tell you how, how they figure out Lent. I looked it up, and it's a calculation called Comptus, which is Latin for Lent, I guess. I don't know. It's the first Sunday after the full moon on or after the 21st of March. Now, 
before then, and I know they were doing this in the 400s, I don't know how much before that. Before then, churches would each have their own formula as to when they were going to celebrate Lent. But then they got together and that's what they came up with. So it's the first Sunday after the full moon on or before, on or after the 21st of March. So the next year you can figure it out yourself. <laughs> Confusing. We have, a lo- we have a very busy church. We have a lot of things <laughs> going on. Um, Friday the 22nd of March, Green Tree School has chosen that to celebrate the birthday of their mascot, and I think he's a, is he an alligator, a crocodile? I don't know, his name is Snappy, and they have a birthday party for Snappy. We have been asked to, each child will get a cupcake, a cuppy cake, in honor of Snappy's birthday on the 22nd. So they are going to need some helpers from our church, if you can, to serve the children. Each classroom will get whatever number of cupcakes that they need. So if you want to help, get there about 9 o'clock. It'll be 9 to 11. And I think you might need to um, have a background check. It's very simple. You can contact Darcy Jablonski, Jablonski. Hmm. I have her phone number here if you're interested, so make sure that if you need to get a background check, I've, there's nothing to it really. I've had it done so many times at so many different places, I always pass. So if you care to join some of us on the 22nd, which is a Friday, to celebrate Snappy's birthday. And they will also be needing help. They have a book fair on the 22nd through the 26th of April from 11 to 1 or 2.30. That's confusing. Anyway, call Darcy. I have her phone number right here if you want it. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to be losing our pastor. And if any of you, it hasn't been decided as of yet what we should do, celebrate whatever for her, for her leaving. So if you care to give a monetary gift um, towards whatever, we're, we haven't decided that as of yet. Just put it in one of the envelopes and put Pastor C on it so we know where the money is going to be going. And you have, sorry guys, you have this in your bulletin. Wow. Um, the 20th of March, on Wednesdays, we've been having ecumenical uh, Lenten services at noon. And on the 20th of March, it'll be here in West Bend. And we will invite all those attending to come downstairs and have some soup. So we, we ladies are going to be busy making soup and... Um, if you care to help, come on down in the basement. We can always use extra help serving it. Oh, bag making day is Wednesday the 13th. Uh, if you if you like to sew, I'm not one of those. <laughs> Please join the ladies uh, in Fellowship Hall. And you don't even have to sew. You can just iron some of the seams or just sit around and 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 talk. Just keep them company. Um, Today is this afternoon at 2 o'clock. We're going to have some Irish music, which is always one of my favorites. My husband said the songs all sound alike, but he's German and Swedish. (laughs) So come come to church at 2 o'clock today and hear David Drake performing Irish songs. And next Sunday... Is that right, the 24th, or am I off by a week? Thank you. We're going to have an Easter egg hunt for kids of all ages, and that includes all of us people. <laughs> uh, you can, If you care to donate to help fill up 
Easter baskets. There's a place out in the narthex where you can do that. And if you want to order some Easter flowers, that's due the 17th. And, well, you can read the rest yourselves. Oh, cookie packing for our homebound people will be the, on Palm Sunday after the service. It'll only take about a half an hour, but we will need some cookies baked if you can get them to the office by 2 p.m. on Thursday, or, or if you can't, give me a call and I'll come and pick them up and deliver them to the church for you. Um, so just read what we have going on. And that's about it. Anyone have any questions? <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, words of welcome. In today's world, we have an abundance of things. If something wears out or we tire of it, we purchase something else to replace it. We just keep buying more and more. We're very commercial. We have closets full of clothes and shoes, much more than we need. Some of us have collections of things. I myself have a collection of teapots, and I've been slowly getting rid of it, uh, giving them to friends and to my nieces, and many more than I ever used. Perhaps we should consider collecting friends. That's just a thought. So Deanna will open with some centering music, please. <laughs> if you are able. And we're going to sing a song. It only takes us far experienced it you spread his love to everyone you want to pass it on what a wondrous time is spring when all the trees are budding the birds begin to sing the flowers start their blooming that's how experienced it you want to sing it's fresh like spring you want to pass it on I wish for you my friend this happiness that I found you can depend on him it matters not where you're bound I'll shout from the mountain tops, I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass.
please read with me the call to worship. Um, we are called to love and care for others. We call upon God to show us the way. Jesus set the example of how to live for others. Help us show others they too are beloved children of God. Set good examples for children to follow. Let us teach children sharing and caring by example. We are all children of God. Let is let him remember to follow the efforts of Jesus by sharing what we have with others. Gracious God, you set us your beloved Son to be an example for us on how our lives are. Please help us to remember to honor all we meet. Let them see by our actions and words how a Christian should act and react. Amen. Now the assurance. Sisters and brothers in Christ, this is good news. Some of us acquire far too many things. Please help us discern the important things in life. Jesus taught the importance of loving kindness. Let that be our motto in life. Amen. I will read, or we will read in unison, Matthew 6, 29 through 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, 
where neither rusts nor moths consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. 
I'd like to talk to you about saving things. In today's world, we have an abundance of things, and that's already been said, hasn't it? Ha, sorry. We have an abundance of things. If something wears out or tire of, get tired of it, we replace it. And that's not what I wanted. <laughs> I know what I'm doing, really, I do. What are your treasures? What are the things that have something of meaning to you? What things were gifts from someone special, or have you just forgotten what you're keeping? Recently, ugh, I cleaned out things in our basement. We had plumbers coming to replace some leaky pipes connected to our boiler, and our house was built in 1915, and some of the pipes were original. I guess it's time they wore out. I got rid of lots of things we didn't need, including some of the things my husband kept. Don't ever tell him. <laughs> we have a st steps that go directly from the basement to outside, so he didn't know. <laughs> and for the first time ever, our garbage bin was full. So then I started going through some things upstairs and in our closet, and I discovered a lot of things I used to think were treasures. I made many trips to Goodwill and St. Vincent's. And I found in a dresser drawer this gourd. It's at least 70 years old, and it's still, it's still whole. It's amazing. My mother gave it to me. She used to use it to darn socks. Now, for those of you that don't know what darning is, it's not a naughty word. It's how you fill a hole in a sock. You put the sock over the gourd, or some women used light bulbs, and you weave a patch going one way and then the other. My mother showed me how, and she gave me this when I got married and left home thinking that I would have to repair Howard's socks that he wore with his uniform. Well, we just throw them out and bought new ones. <laughs> and they were all black, so even if it was only throwing out one, it didn't matter. And, oh, I lost my thing, excuse me. I also have, this is very, very special to me. This is a dog tag that my father wore in World War I. He was over in France, slogging through the slime and the mud, and um, he contracted TB, and they sent him back to the United States uh, to a, an army hospital in New Jersey where he recovered and then he was sent home. But uh, I really treasure this. It has his name on it and then on the back is a number. I'm assuming that was his, the number he was issued when he enlisted in the army. He enlisted in the army reserves knowing that he was going to get called up. And his parents had to go with him to sign because he was underage. And he was the only son and he had six sisters. And I can't imagine, I can't imagine how they felt knowing that he might not come back home. But I have this and I, I treasure this. I truly do. The gourd, well, huh. <laughs> if it's lasted 70 years, it'll last a little longer, I guess. So, excuse me. Where was I? There were, I saved the gourd because I don't have a lot of things. When I, I left home at 21 when I got married and then my parents moved out of the big house into a series of apartments and I wasn't around when they moved. I didn't, didn't have to help them, but um, so I got the gourd and I have a cookie cutter for my mother and I've got my daddy's dog tags and those were important to me. I know of women who have saved all the Christmas cards they ever got in the mail, boxes and boxes of them. Why? <laughs> or maybe you're one and you have a reason, I don't know, but um, <laughs> I, I, 
well, I know these women very well, and I just, uh, I just can't believe they have boxes and boxes of Christmas cards up in their attic. So in the book of Luke, chapter 2, you'll find the story about how Mary and Joseph and their having to travel to Bethlehem, well, you know the story, to get registered because of Emperor Augustus said that everybody had to be registered. Mary delivered her son Jesus while they were there. And there, are, I've seen a lot of drawings of Mary sitting on the back of a donkey while traveling. I mean, she was nine months pregnant, for heaven's sake. It must have been most uncomfortable for her. We moved while I was pregnant for both of our kids. I had a VW Beetle to ride in with Paul and a Maverick with Elizabeth, who, <laughs> class. But much more comfortable than riding on the back of a donkey. And it says that she wrapped her newborn son in swaddling clothes, so she must have had some kind of a bag or something, maybe Joseph carried it, to wrap the swaddling. It was just a long strip of cloth that they wrapped Jesus in. That's what they did with babies. People didn't collect things back there. They just had the things that they needed for necessary daily living. People with riches had others to take of their to take care of their treasures. Did they get in did these people get any joy out of the stuff that they had? They weren't even taking care of it. I've often wondered about that. I used to work with a woman who kept a list of which outfit she wore so she never wore the same outfit two weeks in a row. Huh? <laughs> And all of her clothes, almost all of them, had to be dry cleaned. And her husband went to pick them up one day, and it was $70. I thought, wow, if, if it says dry clean only, I don't buy it. It's got to be washable. <laughs> I used to try and remember what I had worn to church the week before. Heaven forbid I should wear the same thing. If I couldn't remember it, why should I worry anybody else was going to think of it? <laughs> so I don't, if you see me wearing the same thing, eh, it's clean. <laughs> we all need to try and remember why we are all here. We're here to worship God and follow the ways of Jesus. We're not here to add to our collections of things, except for the collection plate. <laughs> That's different. But We've gotten so commercialized, and it, we need to get back to the basics. You don't need 10 pairs of shoes. You don't need a whole closet full of clothes. I've, when I stopped working, I took a lot of my nicer things over to the Friends of Abuse family because those women have to go out on job interviews, and often they leave their home with nothing but what they have on their back. So then they had some clothes to wear for for job interviews and it there's so much that we can do with what we have instead of just buying more I'm not saying you have to go back to darning socks but if you ever need a gourd I, you know I'll loan you one <laughs> but please think about the treasures that we have here on earth go outside and look at the beautiful sunshine and wear your winter coat again <laughs> And soon it's going to be time for gardening. And those of you that like to garden, I'm sure you look forward to what you can plant and what you can harvest. And hug your kids. Oh, my gosh. Hug those children and grandchildren and friends. And we're a big hugging group here, and, and that's good. It shows that we care about each other. So that's the sermon for the day. Take care of things that are important. And don't worry about if you wear the same things to church, because I'm not going to notice anyway. Amen. Um, it's time for prayers and concerns. Gil's got the microphone. Does anyone have something they need to have us pray about? Give him a few minutes. I'd like to pray for joy of the sunshine. It's nice to have that. I'm getting a little tired of the cold weather. <laughs> oh, 
And there she is. Good morning, church family. <laughs> to God be the glory. Oh, thank you, Miss Ellen, for that beautiful message. And I, I thank you for reminding us that we're just passing through. And we are grateful for all the true treasures that we have in our hearts for each other. I stand on behalf of the Kuhop family to share the passing of Miss Joy Kuhop on Thursday morning. Miss Joy had gone through some recent illnesses and challenge, and God whispered to her on Thursday morning that her work here on earth was done. I am so grateful to have been a part of that transition. I am so grateful for her life and her love of her church here at Fifth Avenue United Methodist Church. So on behalf of Brother Bob and, and Tony and Amy and Brian and Carrie and Aaron and Katie, Miss Joy's siblings, they just thank you so much for your care of her in these past weeks if you've mailed cards or sent notes to her encouraging her during this time. Her home going will be um, set at a later date but we ask that you keep the family in prayer as well. So love each other, truly be kind to each other, and give up all that stuff as I'm trying to pack <laughs> and find the treasures to give to others. So God bless you and be with you always. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. That was Pastor Calissa, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Anyone else have anything? I I have a a niece. Okay, I have a Brett. I have a niece that has to go in for surgery um, next week on her spine, and she's been in pain for many years for it. So, please pray for my niece Anne. Lord, in your mercy. And Mr. Brett. Yes, I have an announcement. Um, uh, the trustees are doing a fundraiser, and it's out in the foyer there. And what we're doing is selling these uh, meals, and we would like to, if it's in your heart when you buy one, is to buy one to donate to Green Tree School for our ministry there, and it would go to the teachers and the staff that work with the kids there. And um, so that's what we're doing. If, if it's in your heart to help us, please do so. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. My daughter is a teacher, and I know for a fact that she supplies a lot of things out of her pocket for the kids. She's an art teacher. And for all of you out there that are or were teachers, you know what it's like to make sure your little kids are taken care of. And God bless all of you. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Dear God. Thank you for all that we have, and help us keep in mind all those of our church family that need your help. We appreciate it, and we hold all of them in our hearts and in our prayers. Amen. Would you join me, please, in the Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand if you are able and we will sing the doxology. <laughs>
Please join with me in the offertory prayer. God of love and love for all of us, sometimes we are guilty of forgetting the real meaning of life as you taught us. Please help us to be more caring and sharing in our daily lives. As Jesus forgave others, help us follow his example, forgive our transgressions, and help us to be better Christians in thought and deed. Amen. what is possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible. 
from St. Francis of Assisi. Gil, is the microphone here somewhere? Is Gil here somewhere? I get hollered at when I don't use the microphone. That last song was one of my daddy's favorites, so sorry for losing it. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. As you leave here, remember, we are all God's special children, beloved children, and share that wealth with everyone that you meet, with a smile or just a nod. I've noticed in Wisconsin, we're not afraid to say hello to strangers. Boy, you go to New York or Los Angeles, forget that one. <laughs> so be a, a friendly Wisconsinite to each other. And God bless all of you, safe travels, and see you next week. Amen. <laughs>